This is Jim Cooper, and welcome to this module on JavaScript object properties. Since we just talked about objects and how to create properties on objects, you might be wondering how we could possibly have a whole module dedicated to properties. But it turns out there really is a lot more to properties in JavaScript than meets the eye. And there are some pretty cool things you can do with properties if you're aware of them. You'll learn how to do some advanced work with properties, including working with property attributes and using getters and setters. So let's take a look. In the next couple of examples, you'll see me using the bracket notation for properties. This can be very useful in a few cases. Of course, we know we can look at this person object's first name property as we have been with dot notation like this, person dot first name. And if I save that, that displays Jim as we would expect. But we can also use bracket notation like this. Instead of a dot, I'm gonna use brackets and I'm gonna pass in a string that is the name of a property. So this is requesting the first name property on the person object. And if I save that, we get the same result. So dot notation and bracket notation do the same thing. So why would you ever use bracket notation? What if you for some reason needed to create a property on an object using a property name that is not a valid identifier? For example, a property name with a space in it or some other special character. For example, we could create a property on our person object called hair color like this. So person and then bracket notation and a string hair space color equals brown. Now let's take a look at that value so we can fetch it the same way. And if I save that, you can see that displays brown. Of course, this is not common at all. It could happen maybe if you're using a third party source of JSON data that has property names that are not valid identifiers or something, but you never really run into this. A much more common usage is if you have a variable that contains a property name and you want to get the value of that property off of an object. So imagine I had a variable like this. So property name variable, and it is set to the string first name. I could then get the value of the person object's first name property like this. So I'm just going to pass in that property name variable into the bracket notation. And if I save that, there we go, we're displaying Jim again. One example of a use case for this is using it in conjunction with object.keys or a for in loop to display all of the property values on an object. So we could do that like this. So this is a for in loop that is looping over all the property names in the person object and each time through it's setting the property name variable equal to the name of that property. And if I save that, then you can see what is displayed is the name of a property, a colon, and then the property value. And if you look at our display statement here, you can see that we are displaying the property name, like first name, and then a colon, and then the property value using bracket notation. Bracket notation isn't common, but it is quite useful in the rare cases where you need something like this. Now let's take a closer look at properties. You may be surprised to learn that a property is more than just a name and a value. Every property has a property descriptor that we can use to see the attributes of that property. Let's take a look at the property descriptor for the first name property of our person object. We'll use that with object dot get own property descriptor. So let's see what get own property descriptor returns. There we go. This is describing the first name property of the person object. You can see that it has a value and it's set to Jim. And then it also has writable, enumerable, and configurable attributes. Let's take a look at each of these one at a time. The writable property does what you would probably expect. It defines whether the property's value can be changed from its initial value. So let's make the first name property non-writable. We can change property attributes using the object define property method. And the first parameter of this method is the object that you would like to modify a property on. So we want to modify a property on the person object. And then the second property is the name of the property that you want to modify. So we'll modify the first name property. The last parameter is an object that contains the attributes you'd like to modify. We want to modify the writable attribute. So we'll do that like this. So it's just an object with a property writable set to false. So if I save that, then you can see over here that the first name property is not writable now. 
So let's see what happens when we try to change the value of the first name property now. So first name is not writable. And that's how you use object define property to change the writable attribute. But let's see what happens if a non writable property contains an object. So let's add a name property to our person object. And it will have a first name and last name property. So now person dot name dot first name is Jim. And now let's change this to name. So we're going to make the name property on person non writable. So now we can't change the name property. But interestingly, we can change properties on the name property. So I could set person dot name dot first name to something else. And if I save that and display it, there you can see that I was able to change the first name property of the name property to Chris, even though the name property itself is not writable. What I wouldn't be able to do is set person dot name equal to a new object that would fail. And this makes sense when you consider that the name property is really just a pointer to an object in memory. And when you make it read only, you're just preventing that pointer from being changed. So you can't point the name property to a new object, but you can change properties on that object. As a side note, however, you can prevent properties on the object from being changed using object.freeze. So I can freeze the person.name property. And if I save that, then you can see we're getting an error again. So with the property frozen, I can't even change properties on that property. Next, let's take a look at the enumerable attribute. Okay, let's take a look at the enumerable attribute. First, let's bring back our for in loop. So we're looping over all the properties in the person object, and we're displaying the property names and values. By default, properties on an object are enumerable, meaning we can enumerate over them with for in loops and list them with object.keys. But we can change that. Let's set enumerable to false for the first name property. We'll use the object define property method like we did with the writable attribute. But this time, we'll set enumerable to false. And there, now notice that even though we're looping over all the properties in the person object, that the first name did not get printed. That's because that property is no longer enumerable. Setting the enumerable attribute to false also makes it so the property does not show up in object.keys. So if we display the keys for the person object, notice that it displays only last name and age. And finally, setting enumerable to false also affects JSON serialization of the object. So if I serialize the object and display that, Notice that it displays the last name and the age properties, but not the first name property. So that demonstrates the power of the enumerable property. Note that you can still look at the property normally, however, using dot notation or bracket notation. So person dot first name displays Jim. You just can't enumerate it with a for in loop or with object dot keys, and you can't JSON serialize it. The configurable property locks down a property to prevent the property descriptors themselves from being changed. It also prevents the property from being deleted from the object. Say we want to lock down the person's first name property so that its attributes cannot be changed. We'd use object.define property again, and we just set configurable to false. Now, if I open my error console, if I then try to change the enumerable property, so I'll use define property again, and I'm going to set the enumerable property to false after changing the configurable property. If I save this, notice that I get an error, cannot redefine property. So I'm trying to change the enumerable attribute after changing configurable to false. That's what configurable does. It prevents you from changing property descriptors. And here's an interesting tidbit. Once you change configurable to false, you actually can't change it back again. So if I save that and let's refresh, notice that I'm still getting cannot redefine property. So you can't even change the configurable property back to true again. Interestingly, however, you can change writable after changing configurable defaults. So if I save that and refresh, notice I'm not getting any errors. So that's interesting. Making a property non-configurable 
makes it so you can't change the enumerable or configurable descriptors, but you can change the writable descriptor. There's also one more thing that changing the configurable property does. It makes it so you can't delete a property off of an object. So let's make the first name property configurable again. So we'll delete this line and we'll just comment this out so we're not making it configurable false. And now notice that I can delete the first name property like this. So this actually removes the first name property off of the object. So if I display person, there you can see last name and age are there, but first name isn't. Now it didn't just make it not enumerable so I couldn't see it. It actually deleted the property off of the object. But if I make this first name property not configurable again and save, notice that it says cannot delete property. So making a property non-configurable makes it so you can't change the configurable or enumerable attributes and you can't delete the property. Getters and setters are a couple of pretty cool attributes on a property that let you specify the return value of a property using a function and set the value of a property using a function. This person has a name property, and that name property is an object with a first and last name. What if we want to know this person's full name? Let's use a property getter to create a full name property that does that. To create getters and setters, you have to use define property like this. So notice that I'm creating a get attribute and setting that to a function. So this function is our getter. Now let's just implement it like this. There, now we have a full name property that will return the first and last name appended. Now let's take a look at our person's full name. If I save that, there we go. Notice that returned Jim Cooper. So I was able to call person.fullName and that executed a function that returned Jim Cooper. That's pretty cool. But what if we wanted to go in the other direction? What if we want to set the first and last names when the full name is set? Well, that's where setters come in. So let's add a setter for that. So I'm going to create a set attribute and that's gonna be set to a function. And then we'll just go ahead and implement that function. So I'm going to use the split function to split the incoming value string into two parts. And then I'll set this.name.first to the first part or the part before the space and this.name.last to the part after the space. So the important part of this is that this is a set function that is going to set properties on our person object. So now we can set this person's name like this. Person.fullName equals Fred Jones. And now if I save that, that when I display person.fullName, it returns Fred Jones. But it didn't just set the full name property. It actually set the first and last name properties. So if I display person.name.first and person.name.last, then you can see that they are set to Fred Jones. So you can see that you can do some pretty cool stuff with JavaScript objects. And there really is a lot more to JavaScript properties than initially meets the eye. Here's a quick recap of the key takeaways from this module. First of all, we learned that we can access properties not just with dot notation like this, but also with bracket notation like this, and that this allows us to use variables to access properties on objects. We also learned that we can use object define property to make properties read only or non-enumerable, or even make it so we can't change the property descriptors at all. And finally, we learned how to use object define property to create getter and setter properties that allow us to create properties that are backed by functions. In the next module, you'll learn about prototypes, how they're used to create inheritance chains, and how to create your own prototypal inheritance.